What are we doing? Story time? Story time. St wait. Hi. <laughs> I'm David. <laughs> this is John. <laughs> you can't talk. <laughs> That was smooth. Let me introduce, introduce Doctor Belkowitz. Hi, I'm Doctor Belkowitz. Good Lord. I'm David. Hi, uh, story time. It's story time. It's an awesome story time. Um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm dreading this one a bit. This story time goes back to a project that Whitney and David did. Yeah. And it was an awesome and heroic <laughs> project because they had to go to. The, the, the boundaries of hell itself. Sat on the doorstep. To make this work. <laughs> and it, it, it is with the ASTM 666, the 666, the free saw durability we test. We all know about 666. It's the, the devil test. And if you've <laughs> never, ever, ever looked up 666, we have a link on it. They did a couple of videos, or at least one video, on the, the fabrication of the equipment that we have. And you can actually buy oh, yeah. the equipment. Absolutely. And it costs... About eighty thousand. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like forty k. Oh, my heart just like jumped. Are you serious? I think so. I think that's right. Holy moly, guacamole! Y'all are making that's too much money. <laughs> like, why are you selling that? Well, anyway, that's a topic for a different conversation. Right. So, we had been working with a third party on it, and they were great. Um, but that being said, we wanted to put the control of that test back into our own hands. Right. And it is one of those specialized tests, and David is one of the greatest equipment designers in the field. And that one seems so simple. So... <laughs> the equipment itself, <sighs> so simple. So simple. You just have temperature and rate. Right. Temperature rate. Right. It's not two, like... Two boundary conditions. It's not like you have to take into account lightning strikes. Yeah, <laughs> which, which happened, but <laughs> it's funny, I had forgotten about the lightning strike. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously had to take into account lightning strikes yeah, for this test. I'd forgotten that one. And they don't even say that in the ASTM. <laughs> no. So what we're going to be talking about today is the molds. Why, John? Why would we need to talk about them? You know, mold, molds are ugly. I mean, you know, they, <laughs> you know they're, they create things that are unhealthy for you. Not that type of mold, oh, David. Not that mold. The plastic molds oh. that we use in the 666. Same story. Same story, same story. <laughs> now, it, it's important that we talk about molds because in the 666, and if you've never done it before, you have a concrete prism mm -hmm. in a, a bath. Right. That has to go through 300 freezing and thawing cycles. Correct. F freezing is negative 40 Fahrenheit. Sounds right. I think that's right. Yeah. And thawing is 50 degrees Fahrenheit? No, it's like 32. 32. 30, 34, I think it is. So David and Whitney know all the specifications of the parameters. I was actually the consultant on this project. And my job was to come in and wave the bullshit flag every once in a while. The bad science flag. Uh, yes, sorry, the BS flag. <laughs> there you go. Apologize, apologize. Um, so, uh, so you have to go from this to this, and you need to do it in an eight-hour period. Uh, Eighteen and two to, two to four. Two to four hour. Can't be less than two. Can't be more than four. Totally up. So, what has to happen is you have to have a known volume of water that thaws and then freezes, and the reason why I do thaws and then freezes is because when water thaws and freezes, its volume changes. Yeah. Did you know that, David? I absolutely knew that. So, <laughs> um, and it has to be in within one-eighth of an inch clearance on all sides. Mm -hmm. The bath has a, has a dimension. A dimension around the sample yeah, with I think, water. I think not to exceed an eighth, I think, is correct. Okay, so very, very tight parameters. So David, why would, if we know all this, can't we just get a plastic mold? Well, that's what we thought. Hmm. <laughs> we, we looked at our favorite Amazon, looked at the container store. The container store, I actually know somebody who, I know the person who started the container store. Yeah. That's how well we can do containers <laughs> in this company. We know molds and containers better than anybody. Yeah, we actually looked at having them customized. Which, Custom made. Which we may go back to. What was the biggest problem with the molds, David? Getting them exactly the right size. And the biggest problem that I saw with plastic is 
there are very few plastics that like to go through fatigue cycles, right. freezing and thawing cycles, and expansion and contraction cycles right. without, starts with a C, ends with a racket. <laughs> Rhymes with cracking. Yep, that's all true. That's all true. So I remember, <laughs> we, David and Whitney had, oh, they had done so much research on molds. And they brought me down to do the final review before the experiment started. They had the mold set up, and they were so proud of it. And I looked at the molds, and I said, that's going to crack. And Whitney and David said, <laughs> what are you talking about? That's not going to crack. And I said, yeah, that's going to crack. Did you believe me? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> wrong very often and the few times you were wrong you corrected yourself so you know it, it just happened to be that I spent a lot of time taking you know polymer synthesis classes material science classes and we had to look at all these things the fatigue cycles the changing in temperatures right. especially when it comes to plastics and how plastics become very very brittle and the, like I said before there are very few plastics and the reason why we I say that confidently is because what we found through all this research is there are very few plastics that can deal with the fatigue, the freezing things. Did we find the, the plastic? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I mean, we got through several series of these tests. And we found that the, the very plastic mold, and of course this is the part of the secret of working for this company, we're not going to tell them what mold it is, we had that mold sitting on the shelf. <laughs> It was literally sitting, what, right? Yeah, that's true. Sitting on the shelf, and it was, we had already done the project, this similar project, but instead of freezing, we had done it for heating right. to extreme temperatures. Right. And that was the question that got us going in the right direction. Yeah. Now, what David had said a few minutes ago, and we're going to end this off here in a second, is that we're probably going to go to a custom fabricated mold. Yeah, I think so. Now, when we spoke to those custom fabricated mold folks, remember what they told us? They told us a lot of things, but I'm not sure which one you're thinking well, of. Well, they told us that it's very hard to design something that's going to be able to deal with the expansion, the contraction, right. and the freezing and thawing. That's right. just a lot. You're asking for, you know, a unicorn that has wings and that glows in the dark. Yeah. But that's what we specialize in. That's right. That's what we specialize in. So, um, what were the lessons that you felt we learned from this? Well, you know, designing the equipment seemed so easy that we kind of left out one of the critical critical items in, in the test itself, right. which was the bath. Right. So, I guess, yeah, just um, thinking through the whole critical path, uh -huh. all the way through data collection and reporting is, sure. is key. Sure. Because the equipment itself, well, we had a little, a little stumble, but... <laughs> and that was just because of a light, like, lightning literally <laughs> struck, so... Yeah, lightning struck the lab and burned out the uh, compressor, but uh, other than that, that, that was pretty... It was like the day after the warranty. Day <laughs> after or day before the warranty ended? <laughs> the day after. The day after the warranty ended. It was awesome. It was awesome. But, to their credit, they took... The, oh, they, they did. The manufacturer took care took of it. Took great care of it. Yes, to, to their credit. So... I, 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 sorry, do you have any more? I apologize. No. I had three lessons. Okay. One to piggyback on our uh, Museum of Follies uh, episode one. Right. Which was being true to the experimental process and the critical path. And that's one thing that I saw. And, and folks, you have to understand that Whitney and David were working very hard on this. And they were holding this very close to chest. And every time they had a failure, you guys felt it. Oh yeah. There was time, there was, there was money being wasted, there was time being wasted. We had projects waiting to go in, but David, as our principal engineer, will not allow us to start using a piece of equipment until we have met the standards and have that calibration and have that. Yeah, I think that was the most stressful thing, is that we had literally a lineup of projects waiting to go in. So, so I think that was the first lesson, that you guys stay true to the critical path of development and design and analysis. Right. The book create, the lab create, the real create. Right. Hard as heck to do it, and sometimes it takes an emotional and physical toll. And physical. There's a lot of lifting in this. Uh, the second thing was um, looking outside the box. David and Whitney were already looking outside the box to make this happen. 
but when they got pigeonholed with we have to have this type of mold and we have that was where they started running into problems where they brought me in was to break that cycle and ask the different questions yeah and i think that's a good lesson on all design teams is that independent view that that third eye you know whatever you want to call it that that third eye will see things that those of you engaged in the blocking and running don't see. Right, and it's yeah. so important to have that third set of eyes to sometimes break you out of that monotone brainstorming session. Yeah. Especially yeah. if, gosh, it's getting you right here. The, the yeah. third thing is, which, and I think this is the most important, and this is a, a constant that you'll hear me talk about with everybody on our team. And this is, if you ever know, wonder what it takes to be on the intelligent concrete team. I have a lot of folks sending me curriculum vitae's, resumes, asking me for jobs. And, and I'm looking for something, Whitney is looking for something very specific, and it's perseverance. There were days that Whitney and you were getting emotional about this. Yeah, I think that's, that's a fair, fair judgment. Did you ever give up? Oh, no. <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> Like, yeah. this is like, and I think there was a certain tone like, what do you mean, did I ever give up? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a little bit of an insult, Dr. John. Dr. John. <laughs> and and I, I apologize. I did not mean that to be obtuse or rude or disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, I, you get, know, I get that. But <laughs> that's something that you will see consistently throughout the folks on this team. Uh, if you can't prove to, like, Haley. Haley is the, is the most junior person. She's been here the shortest. Um, I just did a video about you, and I could not, I couldn't look her in the face and have this conversation with her, so I had to do this video in the room, but the reason why I'm so excited to have Haley on the team, the reason why I was so excited to get her past her 90-day review is because she has the perseverance that is reflected upon every person in this company. Well, yeah, I mean, let's, let's summarize it. If it was easy, it wouldn't be here. Uh, what we do is the hard problem. Is the hard problems. <laughs> you got to talk about that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 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 one concept where the the flex is here, the compression is here. And, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what we specialize in is doing the impossible. And that six six six, just the moles. I mean, that could have been failure. That sat on the sidewalk in front of the Museum of Follies. Yeah. But you and Whitney would not let that become a folly. Yeah. That's true. And that, I think, was the most important. Out of the three takeaways for me, that was the most important thing yeah. for me. So anyway, hopefully you all learned something today. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete. Be, Be awesome. awesome.